welcome to Rust releases. Today we've got two releases to discuss. First up, Rust 1.67.0, which was released on the 26th of January, 2023. Thanks to the hard work of 329 contributors, including at least two bots that I'm aware of. Let's talk about some notable changes. Notable change number one. Async functions annotated with the must use attribute now apply that attribute to the value the future returns instead of applying it to the future itself. What does that mean? Let's say you have an async function named bar that returns an integer and you want to make sure that the caller uses that integer and doesn't just drop it unintentionally. You would think that you'd be able to add the must use attribute to your async function, just like you do with normal functions. Then when you call await on that function, the caller would be warned if they didn't use the integer, like in this code. Unfortunately, before Rust 1.67.0, this wouldn't emit a warning. Why not? Well, if you desugar the async function, it's really just a normal function that returns something generated by the compiler that implements the future trait. When something awaits the future, then the future outputs a U32. So the must use attribute got applied to the generated thing that implements the future trait, not the integer it outputs when it's awaited. Fun fact, everything that implements the future trait already has the must use attribute applied to it automatically. So not only did this must use not do what we wanted it to, it applied to something that already had it. In Rust 1.67.0, the must use attribute is applied to the output of the future trait for async functions, which in this case is the integer. So now it works like you would expect. Number two, the MPSC implementation in the standard library has been swapped out for a higher performance one without changing the API. Standard Sync MPSC is the module that contains channels used to communicate between threads. MPSC stands for Multiple Producers, Single Consumer. Or in other words, these channels can have multiple sending ends, but only one receiving end. MPSC was originally written way back in the early days while Rust was being created to write Servo, part of Firefox. Unfortunately, the implementation wasn't all that great, both in terms of the API and performance, but it has remained since Rust 1.0 due to the community's strong commitment to backwards compatibility. However, the folks who wrote MPSC later went on to create Crossbeam, which contains a channel library with a better API, more features, and higher performance. In Rust 1.67, the backend implementation for MPSC was replaced with Crossbeam, though the limited MPSC API remains unchanged due to that backwards compatibility guarantee. So now with MPSC, you get the higher performance backend from Crossbeam, but if you want to access all of Crossbeam's features, you'll still need to use the Crossbeam crate itself. Number three. A number of items that were previously only available in nightly editions of Rust have been stabilized in Rust 1.67. All integer types, from U8 all the way through I128, now have methods for performing integer logarithms of arbitrary base, base2, and base10. As this is integer math, the result is rounded down. The checked methods return an option which is none if the number is zero or negative, while the unchecked methods panic under the same conditions. The non-zero unsigned integer types also gained unchecked logarithm methods for base two and base 10. Unchecked methods are not needed since you can only have problems when the value is zero or negative. And by definition, non-zero unsigned integers can never be zero or negative. Finally, all of the non-zero integers, both signed and unsigned, gained a bits associated constant, which is the number of bits in the type. This is useful for folks who are writing generic functions over non-zero integer types and need to know how many bits they happen to be dealing with. Number four, several APIs which were already stable are now also const, meaning they can be evaluated at compile time when used in const contexts. These functions all deal with converting to or from cares, and they can all be used in const contexts now. Some of these functions are actually in core, and the standard library just re-exports them. Bonus round! Rust 1.67.1 is a patch release that was released on the 9th of February, 2023. This release listed only five contributors, including one bot, and fixed the following issues. Number one. 
Rust 1.67.0 switched to a different archive writer that, it turns out, is unable to read thin archives as inputs. According to the release notes, thin archives are .a files that reference external .o objects. Rust 1.67.1 switched back to using LLVM's archive writer, solving the problem. Number two, there was an unsoundness bug in the bootstrap cache code making Rust 1.67.0 unable to compile itself. While not an issue for most end users, it is quite important to be able to build the compiler itself when you're working on the compiler. Otherwise, you can't use the latest compiler to produce newer compilers. This has now been fixed. Number three, a lot of us notice this one, especially those of us who run Clippy in our CI builds. Rust 1.67.0 introduced a Clippy lint called uninlined format args and put it in the style group, which is one of the enabled by default groups. The lint looks like this. This lint tells you that when you are formatting a variable with a macro like format or print or print line, you can inline the variable into the curly braces in the format string. While it is certainly a convenient option to inline the variable into the format string, it isn't clear that that's the best choice in general, especially when you consider that only bare variable names work this way. If you try to put in a tuple field or a struct field or an expression of any type or absolutely anything other than just a variable name, it doesn't work. So you definitely can't consistently inline everything into the curly braces. However, those are just my feelings. The reason this was reverted was that Rust Analyzer doesn't support inline argument capture, which means no autocomplete. So this lint is temporarily downgraded to the pedantic group, which is not run by default. Expect to see this lint popping back up once Rust Analyzer supports it. And that's all for today, folks. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.